Hello and welcome to Really Random Rant. So today we are going to be talking about a discussion on if we think politics and political issues should be put into comics, why or why not. Um, I am joined by, of course, Victoria and Alex as usual because it's a three-person thing. It's not just my show as some people have misinterpreted it over the years. Um, now, I mean, to be fair, you do most of the work. <laughs> and now, you do have the loudest voice. I want to just clarify, if you're looking for a final answer on this topic, this is not the video for you. Um, if you're looking for a video that's going to change the comic book industry as a whole, this video is not for you. Um, we're yeah, if, you're our, looking for a situation, yeah. if you're looking for a situation where we're trying to convince the others in the room of our opinions, this is not the video for you. <laughs> yeah. Because we are just, all solidly in our brackets. I'm solidly for it. Timothy is solidly against it. And Vic Victoria is solidly, it's not my problem. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just like, so we're, just, we're just here to have a conversation and just sort of bring up some speaking points about the... Yeah. Say your opinion, so, then you can say which side you're on. Yeah, so if you want, if you want a video on just hearing our personal opinions, keep watching. Um, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And then you can comment below your opinions. Whether we agree or not, that's... Who knows? But you can state your own opinions in the comments below. So, all right, we're mo oh, and one final thing: we're mostly going to be focusing on DC and Marvel because they are the go-to for comic books. Um, they're what most people are familiar with, and as far as movies and uh, other media go, they have the most in both uh, in that aspect as well. Whereas other comic book companies don't necessarily have that format. So we're going to be looking at the industry as a whole uh, from different aspects. Um, so one thing I wanted to touch on is the X-Men. Now the X-Men, when they were created, they were, it, the whole thing is like the people who are different and they're getting looked down at as not being equal to humans because they're different. And obviously right there, if you think about it, it's it's a clear political issue right there, or not necessarily political, but you know, it's, it's a real issue in the world. Um, and it's not just something that's a fictional issue. It's something that is real. People look down on others for differences and we shouldn't be doing that obviously, but it's something that a lot of people do. And so X-Men was sort of showing, hey, this isn't a good idea. And so X-Men as a whole, that's kind of their main, their main thing. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, yeah, so like, for example, so I think X-Men is a perfect example of this. Um, X-Men is a really good situation in which people are able to look at that and really empathize with that. And it makes this whole storytelling system much more grounded as a format. Um, it takes all these high fantasy and things like that concepts and apply them to human beings, making them real people. Um, I will say the over-politicalization does make them a bit boring for me personally, um, but I think that the fact that they are as popular as they are is a really good indicator of the fact that like people want to be able to relate to or be able to bring that home, like bring that back down to earth. It takes all these concepts that like they're flying into space now or they just blew up a mountain and like it takes that and it brings it back down to the level of this person has this reason for flying into space because they want to do this for each other. And I think that as soon as you start talking about people and like how they live and how they interact with each other, it's going to get political, whether it's through silence or through speaking about something. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Uh, we'll see. I, I'm all for making a, a comic or a story that tells like, hey, people should be considered equal. But it is hard when that's just about every storyline told with that character. Um, and I get that's the main purpose of them, but that doesn't make it any less annoying. Like sometimes I'll, I'll try watching an episode of an X-Men show or something they're in and it's like the government's all like, oh, mutants have to be destroyed. I'm like, oh, here we go again. And then you'll, you'll go through the same popular storylines because they were so popular. You'll have the, the Dark Phoenix be retold time and time again. And you'll have the Sentinel storyline be told time and time again. And so it just, it feels very repetitive. Not that other comics aren't, but I feel X-Men really is repetitive because they only really have that one narrative. Um, and it, I think it works for a time, but I, I feel like there's, there should be other aspects that are explored uh, versus just the whole 
all humans should be considered equal. And I feel, well, I feel, um, going on that, you said, like, you know, it, it frustrates you. It's like, oh, here's this again. But also the fact that it frustrates you, you know, says something like, you know, you're connecting with it still. Like, it's making you connect because you're like, oh, this storyline again. Oh, great. Because you want you want the X-Men to be accepted. You want them to be accepted by the government and they're not being accepted, which is exactly the point that the comics are trying to make is that, you know, there are people who are in lower classes that aren't being accepted as equals to those of higher classes or races or, you know, whatever you, however you want to put it in your narrative. That's so the fact that, you know, that's getting to you like, Oh, great. Stupid government's not letting these people be equal, like, and it's making you get frustrated. That, to me, makes me feel like they're really doing their job. Um, I will, but I will say, as much as I do think that that is kind of the point, like the idea that, like, like for example, with like the Black Black Lives Matter movement, they've been trying for so long to get heard and it, it just falls on deaf ears all the time. Like that idea of it happening over and over and over again is kind of the point, but I will say, I do understand Timothy, the, the concept of it is a story and like you want to see new things in an episodic storytelling format. So um, I think that might be an execution flaw, but not a, um, Topical. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and I'm I'm usually all for if a political issue is brought up that is completely fictional based as well. And I know a lot of people are against that just because it's like, okay, what's the point of telling this if it doesn't relate to our world at all? But I feel like it is cool seeing storylines that at least at first, maybe if you really break it down, you could see, all right, yeah, there is some basis in reality. But for the most part, it's it's focused in that storyline and it's a it's a fake uh political issue or something they're just making up or maybe it's a it's a fake historical event that happened like they have all right in history this big conflict happened or maybe world war three happened but in real life it that hasn't happened and so it's a fake issue but the storyline to me can still be very engaging just because since it's there's no base in reality they can they can create it as they please and they're not they're not tied to what has happened in history, so to speak. Absolutely. That's a very, very, uh, I really like that sort of thing where it's like in a world where actually the Cold War didn't end peacefully or something like that, like, like, uh, like in Watchmen and things like that, um, where you have those sort of stories where it's like, what if? Um, okay, so no, you're yeah, on those, the side of fake politics. In right. Like I'm, but you don't think they should get real yeah, issues like, in it? And I will say my opinion does change if it's something that's in that's been in the past for a long time. So for example, uh, comic books in World War II, because that was far enough in the past, so to speak, uh, I feel like that's okay because there's so, there is other media too that's dealing with World War II or World War I or whatever it is. I feel like that's okay because it's so far in the past. So maybe issues of today would be fine in say 30 years. But I, I also get, yes, a lot of people reading it, if they want that story are gonna be like, where's the relevance here? Uh, this was, this happened 30 years ago, no one cares anymore. Mm -hmm. And so for people who do like politics and comic books, I understand why those issues have to be presented now, but I feel like they are better in the past uh, no. if, if done at all. To make it clear to our our audience what we're considering politics can you well first we'll have Al um, can you state like your idea of what politics what counts as politics as far as you know what we're discussing here um so what I consider politics is basically any issue that is like that well, I personally actually think that politics mainly has to do with right now, which is kind of interesting um, compared to like what you were talking about. Like, I think that politics is like, like even a simple conversation with a friend is political is as long as like, if you're talking to, um, hmm. so my definition of politics is 
the con the list of concepts that people either support or do not support. Um, and sort of the um, uh, the groups and clubs that people put themselves into based on whether or not they support or don't support these things. Um, and so I think that most things do end up being political by that definition of it. Now, if we're talking from a strictly like governmental politics side of things, then I think that like if you were to put Trump into a comic book, it would be a bit that would be too much. Like that would be weird. But putting concepts into comics is what I'm all for. Okay, and then Tim, you're. I I'm more of like the if it's if it's pushing an agenda or like maybe you're sharing you're sharing your opinion, which is fine but you're trying to make sure that everyone else follows that opinion or you're saying, Hey, this is what is right. So maybe like you're, maybe you're Republican and you're saying that all your views are right. Uh, everything you believe is, is right. Or maybe you're a Democrat and you're saying everything that I'm putting in this comic, that's true. And you should believe that I'm showing it from a fictional perspective, but that's how it is. Or maybe you change a character to fit how, uh, what you believe or push your opinion. So maybe you take Superman and you change something about the character to fit something that you go along with, even if you, if Superman really wouldn't have made that action or had that opinion. So you take a character and you change it to, to fit what you're trying to tell versus keeping the character as they were originally intended or as they are generally. Okay. So with that, um, would you say then that politics could be allowed or the agendas if it's still stuck true to the character? Like... Um, well, like, we'll use Captain America, for example. You mentioned, you know, World War II. Well, assuming we were in that time period still. Um, and Captain America, you know, he's against Nazis and everything. So, you know, you'd say, okay, that's true to the character. And so you'd allow any storyline with that still, but then as soon as they're like, okay, well, you know, what if instead Captain America was on Hitler's side, like when they did the whole Hydra switch and stuff. But if they had done that back, you know, during, and we were still in the time, and they're like, oh, well, we agree with this now. This is what we agree. You know, would you have felt that was wrong? Or would it be okay? Like, I know you're saying you think that's what's wrong. Well, then why is, why can't they do that if they can still keep the other? I think if you're, it's one thing if you're doing like a what if comic book, or an Elseworlds, or whatever you want to call it, where it's, this is an alternate version of the character. But if you're selling it as the real character, it does kind of, it, it contradicts all the other things, unless the storyline is actually showing why they are changing to fit that way. So maybe you do a five arc, a uh, five comic book arc, where these five issues are focused on the character changing, and then you hit that sixth issue, and if you look at from issue one to six, it's a completely different character. It's like, well, that doesn't make sense. But you see this journey through the other ones and you're like, oh, okay. okay. So it makes sense how the character changed. So are you then not totally against politics in it? You're just, you know, you're for story arc? It, sort of, but also I'm still more against it. Um, there have been it, like, I can't say that comic books have never gone, uh, like, okay, people have this opinion nowadays that comic books are too political uh and comic books today are too political and they put that word today and an emphasis on today which to a degree yeah i mean i'm all for that i i'm against politics and comics for the most part but i can't say they're too political today because they have always had that political aspect to them you'll look back uh or even in radio dramas things where like superman fighting the kkk or um, even Captain America taking down Hitler, things like that. Like the, the politics have always been there, whether you see it at first or not. The difference is you might be getting older, so you're noticing it more, or uh, you're, it's, it's based on current events. So now it's more obvious to you because you're like, that's, that's talking about something today. Okay. Um, but I, so I still don't like the idea. Like, for example, um, I would personally, like, consider, like, even, like, when they first made a comic book about a superhero who was a black person, I would consider that a political call, because of the fact that that is, like, suddenly it's comics showing themselves to being, like, 
supportive of the like it, it, it's showing that they are supporting the black community in that situation and so i consider that to be po political now from the perspective of saying that because of the fact that this character is a black character and is in the comics we should make these changes and this character is now going to endorse this change in your life not just saying that this character exists and is worthwhile but you have to change because of that i can absolutely understand a bit of frustration coming from that mm -hmm. um but that being said, art which comics are has always had sort of a, a call to action in most situations for the most part like movies or anything with a thesis statement really has a call to action uh a thesis statement isn't really worth a whole lot if you're saying i believe this is true so go on your merry way and live however you want like usually thesis statements are followed by like calls to action whether that's in one like whether that's the to the democratic or the republic side or more to a neutral side um like it's it's all about like the fact that like uh, again comic books are art on copying media okay so well well see and i think that also the the one statement you made too about the whole the first time a black character was introduced for example uh yeah i get on an outside point it is like this is a big deal on this political issue but as i don't know if the comic should necessarily reflect that it's a big deal Un unless now you can you cer certainly can reflect maybe how uh people viewed black lives in the past if you're trying to make it somewhat grounded in reality so to speak but if you're making a big deal in your comic like this is this is a big thing then it's it sort of does take away that whole aspect if the, like if the storyline is this big deal like whoa we have a person of a different skin color in a comic book now uh whereas if you just presented it like all right uh well i came up with this character um they happen to be they're a different skin color than and i created this character and you you just sell the comic book and there it goes and you do it because it's a great character like um then i think that's slightly so different more... than if you're if you're you make a big deal about it similar to uh well when the media goes and they're like wow this is the first female superhero movie or something it's like if if the intentions of the creators were to do it just to push an agenda i feel like that's different than hey you know it'd be great wonder woman's a great character she she deserves a movie let's make a great storyline based on wonder woman and make a movie for it so Fantastic. you're saying essentially are you trying to say that if you advertise it as this is a big thing because so we'll go with the wonder woman example because a female is getting her own movie a superhero movie and you're saying that defeats the purpose are you saying it defeats the purpose because it's putting them like it's it's like well the character should still be a character and should be on equal level because that's right. it's more equal right so if you're saying right if so you're, if you're advertising it as more it's like well why shouldn't it be a good story anyway you know like it should so you think it should be advertised the same way as any other right because movie also movie. if if you're advertising it differently then that shows that it's uh, yeah i get different genres are going to advertise that this is different than something else but you're saying that that's not normal basically and if you're trying to make something normal and that's why you're doing it then advertising it differently defeats the purpose i would think because you're saying hey this is not normal um and that's why we're doing it and i personally am like i personally am all for the concept of really saying yeah it's been a really male heavy industry the the film and comic book movies in particular industry is like flooded with dudes and we're now we're now taking that step towards doing that and we just want to make sure you know that the reason why we do why we're doing this right now is because of the fact that this is a voice that isn't heard very often and we want to shed light on that that's my personal view on it but i can absolutely understand the idea of just try to make it a normal thing Okay, now here's another question. What do you feel the job of the comic book is? Like, do you feel they are held with the duty to 
shed light on political issues or do you feel that they're just there to entertain? Like, do you feel they have a specific goal or like purpose? Like, where do you feel their place is? See, and that's, that's one of my biggest things because for me, and I get this isn't for everyone's opinion, but for me, comic books are a way to escape, so to speak. They're, they're fiction that you can go to because you're trying to get away from everything in real life and you want this cool fictionalized story. And so when you have these real issues in there, it's sort of distracting because it's like, hey, I'm in here for a fictional storyline and now I'm going back to all the things in the real world, but now it's in this fictional world, uh, so I can't even use this fictional world to escape or even like, um, it, it then you're like, okay, but at least in this fictional world, they have such and such and such a theme that can help them. Or uh, whereas in reality, you don't, maybe like something, some big thing Green Lantern does, for example. I don't know, just a random thing. And then you're like, okay, that's great that Green Lantern did that. But um, in real life, uh, we didn't have that. And so we're still facing this issue, but it was defeated in there by Green Lantern. Um, well, I would have rather just gotten a story where Green Lantern's fighting some random alien creature. I don't know. It, it, for me, I feel like because it's fictional, it should, so, it should lean into that fictional aspect more and less into the so ground you feel of reality. Because because the issue is not resolved currently, you feel they can't do much about it in it because of the fact that it they can't resolve it in the comic book because, well, it's still going on in real life? Is that like... A, yeah, sort of. Um, but then there are it's also... Sort of, it's sort of, it could also be very discouraging to be like, oh, yeah, we did it. And then you come back and you're like, oh, no, no, we didn't. No, we mm -hmm. did not. Like, I, I, I get that. that. That makes sense. Now, I get there are world issues, so to speak, that I'm, I'm still sort of against it. But at the same time, like, it would be weird not including it or like even medical conditions like maybe cancer uh you you put someone with it would be weird not to have cancer exist whatsoever in any in any comic book universe because it's such as it's such a big thing but then but then if you have this opportunity to cure cancer the cancer in your comic i guess to that extent you could do it but when it gets i, I don't know there's different degrees of levels i feel fit and things that i feel don't fit that's why it's also nice to have a fictionalized government like maybe you're in in the marvel universe it's not like okay barack obama was president now donald trump is president then so like on to the next thing now some of their presidents were real like you had george washington i believe and things like that but when it gets more modern they start creating their own characters and i feel that works because then you can create however you want to do if you're doing a, you're you have this fictional political thing however Oftentimes, they'll then try to change it to fit how the real president is, but how their their opinion on that president is. And then that's how they're going to do it. So it's like, this reflects my opinion on Barack Obama. This reflects my opinion on Trump. Um, and so they're, they're doing that through this fictional character. And so I don't know, it, it feels, it, it doesn't fit in my opinion. So you feel, well... I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. But how do you, it seems? To, yeah. How do you feel about like uh, presidents and stuff when they're used in comics? <sighs> okay. So I'm just going to make a bit of, a couple of broad statements that I know are probably going to be inaccurate to a certain extent, but just like, so just in general, people who are in the arts tend to be more democratic leading that's just is a tendency in the arts and so if you have a situation where people are representing um like presidents and things like that then that does create an unequal sort of issue with um when it comes to like for example specifically the fact that like you're only going to get one side of that story. You're not going to understand it from both perspectives and it's going to create a one dimensional situation. Unless they go to extra lengths to try to tell the story from a more two dimensional or maybe even three dimensional perspective where you really understand that this person who is Republican, for example, had reasons for doing what they did or that this person who was democratic had reasons to do what they did. Um, but yeah, I do, I will say like, 
because of the fact that the industries are very much more like their arts and so they, they tend to be much more liberal leaning that could create very much a skewed perspective when it comes to any given political view mm -hmm. on equal representation in that right because everyone everyone has a bias doesn't matter what side you're on you have a bias about stuff about life and everything in general like i mean even now you guys are stating your bias opinions on where you stand and you know so it's yeah so then do you feel that it's okay like would you say that if they were to represent a president if they were to mention a president in the comments they should create their own president and is it okay if they have it you know represent like be have like pull from aspects of who is currently president like you know if if they create their own presidents mm -hmm. do you feel they can create their own president and they should be allowed or they shouldn't be allowed to pull the ideas and beliefs off the person who is currently president and either play it up for good or play it up for evil whatever their stance is or whatever they want to do with that for their story arc i would say the current president uh no matter who it is i feel like that should always be off limits because then you are you're you're going potentially change people's real view if you i mean i know you're saying right, use a fictionalized saying, yes. person but if you're taking their their beliefs and then putting it to your personal agenda maybe it's not even your beliefs in which case it's not going to be how that person would be and you're creating this dilemma where people are like oh you know that person kind of reflects trump i see what they're doing there but then it's a skewed perspective. So then maybe, or maybe even you're so tied into the storyline, so caught up in it that uh, let's call them President President Dwight Schrute there. <laughs> so Dwight Schrute's president, um, but they make him like how they view Trump. And then he does some terrible thing. And then your opinion on Trump randomly changes because this fictional character, this fictional president, Dwight Schrute, did some awful thing. You're like, okay, oh, that could happen. Do you feel that, feel, could, that, you feel that could work in reverse? Like they do some incredibly great thing, and then it makes people think higher of whoever's in power. I think to a degree it could. Um, people are more. I think it's easier for people to look down on someone than to look up at them. Um, mm -hmm. And that doesn't matter where you're coming from, That's the background true. golf. It is, yeah. It's easier to. So your opinion people can quickly to change to looking down. So when you're doing something positive about a character, it would be harder to make them view the real person it's reflecting to be like that. But I think to a degree it could still work or over time it could work. So my opinion would be if you're creating a president for a storyline and you need them to be in there, you don't really do, you make them a one dimensional character with little to no backstory and you don't even necessarily see what they reflect. So maybe you're, you need, uh, and we'll go back to DC now. You need Batman to save the president because you want you want to show the stakes of your story and show how high those stakes are to the president's capture. And you make this random president and Batman saves the president, but you don't know what his views are. You just know, okay, the president was in danger. This is bad, but Batman stopped the bad guy and saved the president. Or, oh, this president just died and now do you, you need feel, another one. Do you feel that... If you, I know I'm picking on you a lot. It's, I can hear you better than I can hear Alex. <laughs> That's the main. But do you feel that if you create a one dimensional character, then even if it is just a side character, people really, really won't connect as well or not? Um, and actually, I'm going to toss this question over to Alex. Like how Tim was saying, you know, he should make the president or whoever it is a completely one dimensional character. So that way, you know, it won't reflect on anything. But would that make the stakes? Do you think that would make the stakes less high or more high for Batman? Like, how do you think people would connect that with that if it was one dimensional side character? Right. Because of the fact that you don't know what his views are, it does make it difficult for you to be able to be like, oh, this person. Like, for example, if he's now, if it's a person who's in danger, then that like physical danger, which is most of the situations in comics and stuff like that, that is no matter what a situation where I think it would be pretty well agreed that it's, they're a person worthy of saying, saving because of the fact that they're a, a person. 
Um, but that being said, there are certain political views that if you were – so, like, maybe go – maybe state what their political views are, but make it so that it's just a broad – like, again, this is in a comic book world where it can – it can any really anything can happen so it doesn't necessarily need to be about like housing or things like that it can be about like this person wants to go through and uh their general uh like goal is to make sure that the the average person can make more money and live a better life like, if that's what their political view is, that's not a hard thing to back up. Mm-hmm. Don't show what that person thinks the average person is, because that could sometimes get very political. Um, and, but, like, definitely make it so that, like, make it so that they're a good person. If you want to make it so that it's an important thing, you can definitely throw in a comic book, uh, 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 like a, a newspaper that says that this person wants the average person to be able to live a more wealthy life that being said i think it would also make perfect sense to also go for more of a a controversial thing where then in that case batman not only has to fight this person not only has do they have to fight the villain but they also have but batman also has to decide like whether or not he wants to be a person who supports this specific agenda and that could be like a serious conversation with someone um so yeah i think i think that i think that like if you were to have it so that it's like the president has been kidnapped right after he tries to push this yada yada agenda then batman can then have a situation where he's forced to make that decision for himself and not necessarily answer the question but definitely bring up some of the issues and different points and have that go through his brain and have him really think that over and think really hard about that. Um, not necessarily serving up answers for people, but maybe, who knows? I, I, I just think that it's, it would be, you know, I think it would absolutely be useful to be able okay, to have it now, where it's specific. What if we take that one dimensional character and change it to a historical figure? Like let's change it to, uh, Abraham Lincoln. Now, what if it was Abraham Lincoln and, you know, Batman, even though this is, this is, again, Batman's just the example. This is not what he believes or anything, but say Batman really did not support Abraham Lincoln. (laughs) This is the most ridiculous (laughs) sentence I have ever said. (laughs) Say Batman did not support Abraham Lincoln whatsoever and stuff. Do you think, okay, that would still work? Or do you think it would be like, well, we all love Abraham Lincoln. Why is Batman not like him? And then comic sales go down. Do you think it, how do you feel that would, like, how do you feel like that, that situation you just gave, but replace unnamed president to Abraham Lincoln? That's a very good question. My general thought on that is that you definitely have to have some really good backstory reasons and have some really good like character motivated reasons to do that and like tim was saying you can't have it where like this person is standing up for justice and things like that and suddenly batman's like no yeah i want the slave trade to keep going like you can't do that you can't you can't like be like this is the person who wants to stand for what's right and stand for for making sure that all people are treated equal and then also have him be like oh no yeah yeah no just i'm gonna forward i'm, I'm gonna try to assassinate abraham lincoln before he's able to to, to free the slaves. No, no, like that, that's not character motivated. You'd have to have a really, really, that would be the weirdest comic ever, but you'd have to have like a well-written, like character motivated reason to do that. I just, I think that that specific example would be really hard to pull off, but you know, right, it but... could happen if with a good enough writer. I, 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 I I think that anything, as long as it's character motivated and story driven, can really pass. But see, I feel like that's that's what makes it also so complicated with bringing in political figures into fictional storytelling. Because you're like, all right, well, for starters, let's say we have a random president. This is this is our president currently. You have to determine, all right, well, in this universe, 
were George Washington and Abraham Lincoln, were they real people? Uh, or is the whole thing fictionalized? Because then you also are wondering, okay, well, if they were real, why is this person president and not the real president at the moment? Especially because looking back, like maybe it, it makes sense uh, right now because you're like, well, we don't want people's opinion on the president to change. But then someone goes and reads this storyline 40 years in the future when it's a different president. They're like, okay, so why, why is this, this person didn't exist. What's, what's going on here? Um, this is supposed to take place in 2020 um, and Trump's not the president. What, uh, this, this doesn't add up. So well, you face that issue because you, you do have to determine, I guess, if you have a fictional president, were the other presidents people who existed in your universe or did they never exist and you have different placeholders? Whether you show them or not, that's one thing, but just, just showing them or even like going to a museum. All right, well, maybe Captain America goes to a museum um, when he, right after he got out of the ice, he goes to a museum to check on things. You have to determine right then, all right, what is, what's our basis on the fictional reality we have here? Um, this fictional world, what is our history? Because he's at this museum this is where we determine, all right, are we going from a real world standpoint um, with things added in like Hydra, or are we going from a fictionalized standpoint where there's some random president, some random general, things like that. Um, and so I, it's really hard. That's why it's hard just including poli politics uh, when it comes to the government into fictional media and comics. Yeah, and I will say, I think that, that leans away from the side of politics. That, that is less supporting an ideal and more of like, like it sort of feels more like, uh, what's it called in movies, where like something moves in the scene without being actually physically moved by a character. Uh, continuity. Yeah. Like, it's it has less to do with politics and more to do with continuity. I think it's a good point. I think it could really complicate a lot of stuff, but I don't think it really affects necessarily the concept of putting politics into comics. I think the comic politics is more about ideals and agendas and things like that and less about specific people. But with that being said, I think it is kind of hard because we, uh, let's say you're going with, all right, well, we, yeah, let's put Abraham Lincoln in uh, as being the 16th president because that makes sense. Why not everyone like Lincoln? Well, again, let's jump to this hypothetical 40 years in the future. You're looking back at the presidents of our time um, when, when we were growing up and the if people's opinions on them are still, it, it's gonna, it's, you're gonna be like, all right, well, are we, gonna, are we gonna make it where Trump was this guy who was loved by everyone? Or are we gonna make it where Trump was, that some people liked him, some people didn't? Obama, was he liked by everyone, was he not? Um, and yes, not everyone liked Lincoln, but in today's society, if you say something about Abraham Lincoln, just about everyone's going to be for Abraham Lincoln. Um, and I'm not sure if that's because he was so far in the past, if it was his ideals, what it is. But if you're looking now from going into the future, from our perspective, it, it's like, okay, well, we can put Trump because it was a long time ago. But what are what's the general opinion on how we show this? And I think that's it. Just it gets hard throwing in, and that's why you it's it's really hard showing even political figures from the past because then you do have this question of what's the past in our future, so to speak. Well, then that brings up another question. Um, if you were making a comic, so you said you in this these hypothetical situations they should make one-dimensional presidents, right? Mm -hmm. Should they make totally different sides then? Should there not be Democrat, liberal, Republican, all those? Like, should those just not exist? And it should be some other things that are, like, different and, like, maybe mix viewpoints of different ones and make their own separate thing? Or should it be where they still have left side, right side? How do you feel about, like, if they have this one-dimensional character, obviously right. people elected him, how did they decide to vote for him? Should the, if you made up a completely fictional situation, 
should there be completely fictional parties? Or should it stick with Democrat and Republican because, well, that's what people are familiar with who would be reading the comics. I feel like it seems sort of uh, hypocritical or contradictory to what I'm saying, but I do feel like in that case, you should still keep the real political parties only because let's say you're creating your own ones you're going to create the exact same thing and just come up with a different name for it, in which case people would be like, why didn't they just go with the names of the actual political parties? Because no matter what, you're going to have those, those views for different situations, I think. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but that's how I feel like you're going to have the same views on each theme, regardless of, you know, all right, this side fights for this, this side fights for this. So let's call them uh, the hippos, and the giraffes. Those are the names of the po uh, political parties. Uh, we have the, the hippos are like this, the giraffes are like this. Well, people are gonna be like, okay, so the hippos are clearly uh, what the libertarians are. Uh, so why not just call them that? That's how I feel. And I, I get how it sort of goes against everything else I've been saying, but to a degree it would, it would feel odd to do the exact same well, you could say you could say that Hydra was the exact same as the Nazis. You could say that they put that because essentially Hydra was undercover as Nazis. Because for a while, you know, Captain America, oh, he's fighting Nazis, he's fighting Nazis. Oh, wait, it's Hydra now. Why do you think they should have kept it as the Nazis? Or do you think it's good they switched to Hydra? Because it's their fictional world and they can play upon that. And both of you can answer this question. I think, well, from my standpoint, I know late, I don't know how long this has been going on, but I know it's been more evident lately. Uh, Marvel has been trying to make Hydra separated from the Nazis. Like they'll give, uh, they'll give new reasons to how, why that is. Like maybe, oh, well, Hydra actually was started years before and then they happened to join up with the Nazis because they had the same ideal or they used the Nazis as a cover up, but uh, Hydra is its own separate thing. And they've done that a lot with the MCU, I've noticed. They've really separated Hydra from, uh, from just being with the Nazis. At least, at least as if you look at the whole, um, in the movies you see it less, but in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. they went and they're like, no, they were actually, this was what Hydra was formed for and all that. So it's like, they've, and they've been doing it in comics too. Marvel's trying to separate them uh, just because I guess they want people I guess it, it's probably part of the reason is um, so one, they can keep the storytelling going for a longer period of time. But then the second reason is because there's lots of people that just for fun, they like to go around saying hail Hydra and all that. But then if you're like saying hail Hydra, it's like, wait, you're, yeah, you're making a joke like hail Hydra. Okay. But you're kind of saying really that you're okay. fine with the Nazis. Um, that's that's not yeah. right. So I see why there's they're separating it. So to bring it back to what you're saying um, on if it if they should like have real things, it's it's hard to tackle because you do you do come up with conflicts like that um, just in general. And I feel like even if even if they separate it, like let's say Hydra was never it, it was never the Nazis it was always Hydra there. Um, and maybe the Nazis never even exist in your fictional world. Well, some people are going to look at that while reading the comic and they'll be like, okay, so this is the Marvel Universe's equivalent of um, the Nazis. And so it's similar again to the political parties. I feel like it, it, it's hard to tackle because I think, I guess some, to a degree, some realism does have to be put in the comics so you get, uh, be, it, so you get an idea. But I feel like to a is some it goes too far um it, it's it's hard to balance the two um which is why it seems that some people it sometimes it is like comics are too political or other times it's comics aren't political enough okay. because it's hard to, it's it is hard to find a balance Alex, we'll pass it to you. like for example um like i'm going to go with like a current thing like the black lives matter movement if a comment were if a comic were to release a a specific issue 
that were to support or uh, that were to support, let's say, support the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I would find that would be a comic doing its job because of the fact that it's telling a story about people and like think about it like comic books when they were first created were were for the misfits they were for the people who didn't really fit in and so it's sort of always been like this place where like the underrepresented get to be represented and i i think that yeah it's important for people to be able to say i think that this specific group right now is being re underrepresented um whether that was um, a couple of years ago when um, it seemed like all the media was completely against all Republicans because they thought they were a bunch of yeehaw, uh, like yeehaw cowboys. Like, or if it's like right now when everyone is thinking about the fact that like uh, Democrats and people like that are like destroying property right now or like are, are like people who get really angry about everything. And so like, yeah, I th I think that that is important. Okay. I but think one, it's important for comics to represent the underrepresented. Okay, but one might say, well, yeah, but they were already doing their part with the X Men. You know, that's they've been tackling racism with the X Men. They've been using that as their sort of outlet of like, okay, well, we'll use these characters to represent this and you know, and, you know, they're outcast and stuff and see how they overcome it. Some might say, well, yeah, they were already tackling, like, the Black Lives Matter, but they were doing it through the view of doing it through the view of X-Men comics. What do you say to that? You say, well, they need to do more. Do you say, like, that's not enough? Or are you saying, you know, that, well, that might, like, what, what are your, what's your opinion on that? I think that it is important so like for example in the situation of the X-Men most of the X-Men are white and they are while they do represent the concept of being under of being people who are like disdained by the government and are being pushed down like they fill a lot of the spaces that being black do the, the being black, like, it, it tells similar stories. I, I think that there are, there are, it's important for us to have stories that really lean into and emphasize characters like Luke Cage or Black Panther or Falcon. And like, they just make a point of being like, yeah, we're here, this matters, and you're not allowed to tell us it doesn't matter. Or again, if, if like if in the future at some point because of all of the things in history like white people start getting people start being racist towards white people in this hypothetical universe if people start like really hurting white people because of the fact that they because of the things that they did in the past or, or are doing right now or whatever if people start doing that you'd want there to be representation for that you'd want people to not just be like oh, here's a black group of people, but we're having a representative of the issues that white people are dealing with right now. No, you'd want it to be for you. You'd want it to be like a story told for you. So I think it's very important for us. Like, I think that the X-Men, it's fantastic. I just think that it's absolutely vital that we really lean into supporting people who are not supported through the arts. All right, well, going along with that, um, let's say that they do go on and tell that story uh, in the comics and they do the whole Black Lives Matter movement. Um, do you feel they should go with a general sense of, all right, yeah, Black Lives Matter, because of course they do, um, or, uh, but then you, like, you have this broad sense and that is true, but then you have these other smaller issues like a lot of the Black Lives uh, Matter movement key word here is the movement, not, not the term itself. Uh, the movement is against, against the whole police force and against police in general, um, not just against police brutality, but against the police and trying to take it out. Uh, but then you have, so you have people that are like, the police should be there, police shouldn't be there. 
Do you think issues like that should come in? Or do you think it should stay with uh, just the broad term that, yeah, Black Lives Matter and we're showing that they matter? Like, do you think the whole movement should be in there or and different views with it? Or do you think just in general, Black Lives Matter, so we're showing Black Lives Matter in our comic? Because uh, I'll give example, they had uh, an issue where, an issue of a comic where Superman was standing up to police brutality, uh, which is great uh, because yeah, br the police brutality, uh, it, it's, it's really bad. Um, but I, I'm not sure, I, I wish I did know this, but I'm not sure if the writer doing it was trying to say that, okay, Superman is against all the police or if he's just saying, hey, Superman stopping this bad action because it's a bad action. So how do you feel on issues like that um, going along? Well, I think that the great thing about the idea of spending more time on topics like this is that you have time to be able to fit in minutia and detail. Like you can absolutely emphasize the fact that the police have certain flaws in them and there are certain issues with the system there. Or you could also, you could take that time, but you can also have time to really focus on the fact that there are definitely cops out there who are doing their best to actually keep these communities safe on top of the people who are doing the exact opposite and are, are prejudiced and are trying to hurt them. But you could have, like, if you want to spend time on this topic, you have time. Like, they're artists. No one, no one is telling you that you have to, like, okay, this, this is my comic book about this, and now we're moving on to the next topic because, because we have to follow all the trends. No, you can follow the, you can do something that's currently trending, but then you can also follow through and find some more details and minutia, and really try to represent all sides of things. Um, because of the fact that you could introduce a character who is a very cruel, mean, angry cop. Yes, you could do that, but you could also introduce a very kind cop who is doing his best to protect people and to protect, um, like, the people who are being put down and hurt, um, specifically, like, like African-American individual, individuals in our nation. Like, you could have both sides of that, in which case you're representing the fact that, yes, there are issues in the police, but then there's also really good people there, um, which both raises awareness, but it also promotes understanding of other people, and it doesn't promote the concept of just being like, oh, you're a police officer? I hate you now. No, you don't. No, you can't do that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that comic books have the ability to be detailed and multifaceted because of the fact that it's art. It's storytelling. You can do that. Okay, so then how do you both of you feel, you know, the, the Black Lives Matter movement and everything, how do you feel about um, white comic book creators, like ca Caucasian comic book creators, do you think they should be allowed to write about the Black characters or not because, well, throughout history there has been, you know, bad racial stereotypes written by white creators in comic books? How do you feel like, you know, because obviously we aren't allowing act white actors anymore to play black characters on screen. Should that be the same for writers in comic books? If you're writing your solo comic book, you're writing your strong black independent lead, but you're a white male or a white female or really just if you're not the same race. How do you guys feel about that? Should, should that be allowed in comic I, books? I know this is going more broad than politics in the comic books themselves but you know i'd like to know a little bit more on how you guys feel about that i think it's, it's hard because as soon as as soon as you do that that means that those black creators also can no longer use white characters if you're if you're trying to actually go for equality and not just making up for past mistakes because i think a lot of times that's how uh things are get skewed it's like all right well we want equality so let's make up for past mistakes and you make up for past mistakes versus just fixing the issue right there and saying, yeah, what we did in the past was wrong, but now we're fixing it here. You try to make up for it, which ends up making it skewed either side back and forth. Um, and so maybe you can go that way, but then you have to know that, all right, well now these, these black creators are also limited to 
those black characters, which also makes it hard because of the lack of black characters. So yes, there's always the opportunity to keep creating and there should be more black creator or er, black characters constantly created, but it is, it is kind of hard um, because you're limited with the characters that you have then, or maybe you want to do a cool story where uh, right, because we want we want the culture. We want to make sure we capture it, but we also don't want a stereotype. Right, Is that and, what we're and we don't want it limited either. So it would be it would be hard because then you have let's you let's say you have this really great storyline idea for Luke Cage to team up with Spider Man as he's done in the past, and you're using the Peter Parker Spider Man. Well, if you're limited to doing only your skin color, that's the character you're limited with. You have to then. Uh, your storyline, the only way to get it done is if you have another creator with you, which I do think a collaborative force is great, and that probably is the way to do it, as long as that creator shares the same vision of the storyline as you do. Because if they, you could be paired up with someone who has a different vision for the storyline, and then you're going to have this conflict, not just throughout the whole storyline, but even in one issue, you might see one page, and you're like, wait, that, this, this doesn't make sense. And then you have this tor a terrible story because the creators were going head to head on what they wanted the story to be like. So I think if that's the way it were to be, then you would need to have uh, a collaborative, I think it, it would have to be collaborative and you'd have to make sure that the creators are given uh, creative liberties, but they're giving uh, someone who's going to work and have the same vision of the storyline as them, but share the perspectives in the way they should be shared versus just doing, well, we're a business. All right. So, uh, John, you're going to be paired up with James. Well, okay. Well, James doesn't know what I want for the storyline. It doesn't matter. That's, that's how it's going to be. You then have a horrible storyline. Um, right. And I, and I, I definitely think that diversifying the um, uh, comic creation scene would be a really good solution to this whole question. I think that Tim is absolutely correct in that it should absolutely be that you involve black writers into the process of it. Or if you're writing about Asian people, you involve Asian writers. Or like, if you want to represent a community, you involve someone of that community um, in the process of representing it. Um, people who know how to tell stories so it doesn't turn into a Mary Sue or a Gary Stu sort of situation. You don't want that. What you want is you want good, solid characters that properly represent not the entirety of it, but some of the issues. Because again, that's the other thing. You can't have a character that represents all black people or all white people. Like if you were to say that like Superman is a representation of every white person ever, you would be like, um, no. No, that's not accurate, but like I think that it's important for us to so yeah, I when you're writing about people of color or if you're writing about Asian people or if you're writing about a person, try to involve that person in the creative process. Even if it is just like, hey, I wrote this script for this comic. I want to shoot it over to you. Do you mind looking over it to make sure that none of my biases none of my personal biases slipped through? And if they did, you want a conversation about it. Like that is a perfectly appropriate way to write that because then it doesn't slow down the process by being like, oh, every five pages you have to hand it off and have it checked out. But at the same time, it does get people involved. It gets people of color or people of different communities involved in the creative process. Am I lagging? Uh, a little, but it's not, it's not a terrible lag. We're getting close to it, so. Okay. We we got all of, we heard everything you just said. Okay. It's not like it was breaking up. It's just the the camera that's. So. Um, I think also uh, another issue. Um, that's uh, I'll go back again to I'll bring up the issue of police brutality again. Um, if you're going to tell a storyline where someone maybe is actually all uh, against the whole police force, not just one action, not just one police officer, but the whole force, uh, you have to be careful with the character you pick and you need to look at their storyline. If you are going to include this, which I don't know, I feel like issues like that, again, I'm not, I don't really like in the comics, that's that's my whole standpoint on this, but if it's, if it's included, um, 
you have to know how the character would react overall and pick a character that fits. So if it's a character that uh, in the past has been all for the police and then you randomly are like, oh, I want that character because they're popular and you suddenly pick them, then it's like, um, wait, this doesn't make sense. Why, so why, why are they against it? Well, because I'm against it. Oh, no, that doesn't make sense. Pick a character or create a new character that's for it. Um, so look at, you have to look at the character's history or at least that version of the character. So maybe, maybe this is the new 52 version of, uh, of Wonder Woman. So you look at her, all her new 52 stuff and you're like, okay, this is how she is in the new 52. You don't necessarily have to be like, all right, this is how she was pre-crisis. This is how she was post-crisis. This is how she was in the 40s. Not necessarily all of that, but at least this version of the character, this is how she is. So this is how her viewpoint would be on this issue. What if they write a whole new, like what if it's the start of a new series? So you said they don't have to look back and all that. What if it's the start to a new series and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, Superman was always on the side of justice. Why is he now like this? Why is he now on this other side or whatever, you know? Why, why is he now for police brutality? Not that anyone would ever do that with Superman, but you know, why is he suddenly supporting this? If he was always on, you know, making sure everyone was safe and stuff. It, but they're like, well, this is a new comic series. This is a new version of the character, you know, that. I think with things like that, you do have to then put it as this is not the official canon. Because to that degree, if, if someone has an idea of how a character is, you can't change it so much, even in a reboot, that you're like, this is the standard version of the character. Um, and yes, it's a reboot. So that's, that's why we can change whatever we want. I feel like to that degree, it does have to be a different view. Because yes, you're, you're restarting from scratch. So technically, it's as if this is a new character. But people do have that view on how Superman would be already. And so no matter what, it's not going to be displayed as a new character unless you say this is an Elseworld storyline. So in this universe, Superman is against it, but this is not the main canon. If you want the main canon, read such and such and such. Um, so similar to storylines where like Superman uh, grew up in Russia. It's like, you know, that's not the real Superman. That's not the Superman we're going to be stuck with for the next 20, 30 years. That's not how it's going to be but you've got the storyline where you do have that. Um, yeah. Al, um, do you have anything more to say on this? Because we're going to wrap up soon, but. Yeah, I was going to say, we've been talking for like an hour. Um, no, yeah. I think in general, uh, my closing statement in general is that um, comic, comic books are a form of art. And I think that art should represent the morals and opinions of the people who write it or draw it. And so in that case, I think yes. To a certain extent, the ideals and the politics and the political views of a writer should be, with caution, handled. I think, I think that political views should be handled in comics. So that way it can represent how they feel um, the world should function or the world does function. Um, and it also is a place where people should be able to feel like I'm able to see a character that is like me. And so I think that comes for, that, that goes for like people of color or people in different communities. Um, because of the fact that comics have always been for the outsiders. And so, yes, I think that comics are a place that should be safe for politics. And then I would close with saying, if, if politics are, are inserted into comics, which again, they will always be, regardless of how I feel. Um, I think that the, if you're going to pick a writer to give their idea that it should be its own separate thing, or you keep that character on, or that writer on that character for as long as possible. So let's say you have Alex Hawks that starts writing for The Flash. Well, Alex is put on charge of writing for The Flash as long as that 
universe goes until it reboots next. So even if Flash is introduced into a Justice League comic book, you have Alex on board on creative duties to an extent. So he looks over the comic and he's like, yes, this is this fits with how I write the Flash. So you're good. This gets the okay from me. And Alex is that supervisor. So you have a supervisor for each character. And so that no matter what, they stay, the continuity lines up with how they are um, and what their view would be on a, a specific issue. And so you have that, that view instead of saying like, all right, so Alex is the main issue on or main writer on the Flash, but this issue of the comic, issue five, is written by Victoria Weber, and then she just writes the whole comic, and it doesn't fit. So I think Alex would have to write, uh, or at least oversee the full thing, and be a supervisor on that character for wherever they are inserted. Otherwise, it's like, all right, this is a different version of the Flash. That's how I feel. Um, if since politics are going to always be a part of the comic book I industry. feel a story is the point of a story any story is to have a character to allow you well to allow you to escape from life and the stress of your own life while still giving you a character to connect with and feel for and feel with and I feel like as long as that is being accomplished politics in or out I feel like if, as long as it's being accomplished, that's the point, that's the goal, then it's good. That's, and that being said, I think, uh, thank you guys for doing this. Comment below if you enjoyed this and if you made it through the whole video, we thank you for watching this. Um, we really appreciate it, because, especially because we didn't have a definitive answer on how this ends. Uh, if you watched this far into the video, thank you for just listening and please comment below with your opinions so we can hear them. We will definitely read them and we maybe, maybe we'll react to them sometime. Who knows? But we'll definitely reply and make sure we see what you have to say. Um, with that, we're going to close this really random rants, uh, episode out. So see you next time.